morning. Welcome back. You're still watching Debrek on this 28th day of May 2024. In studio, I have John Kagushi, the Member of Parliament for Mukurene Constituency. Good morning, Moshmo. Good morning, Sam. And I have Fred Okango, who is the Political Affairs Secretary within KANU, the Independence Party. Good morning. Good morning, Sam. We're still expecting Deputy Speaker at the National Assembly, Gladys Bose, as soon as she joins us, she'll be getting on the panel. But before then, on the papers this morning, you're looking at the big climate rip-off that uh, the standard is talking about. Cheap electricity connections on the way. A deal was signed yesterday um, at State House. Then intern teachers win fight for higher pay that is on the Daily Nation. They're talking about 26,000 tutors we hired in January last year to teach in public GSS can now end their ongoing strike and go back to class after the housing, or rather the House Education Committee intervened to have the TSC allowed and allocated 8.3 billion shillings. State works back on its plan to end school feeding a scheme. Some 2 billion has been reinstated uh, through the um, uh, National Assembly's Education Committee. And YNCAC wants new names for 10 counties, saying that uh, uh, they have an ethnic condition. You're talking about Meru, the Rakanidi, Nandi, Kisi, Trukana, Embu, Samburu, Tetataveta, West Pokot, and Edgar Marakwet, I mean, counties. Supremacy contests, rock regions in UDA grassroots elections, and talking about what has been happening within that political party. Then, not all about goodies. US flexes soft power as it advances rights issues in Kenya. And that is a story that is on uh, page 10 of the Daily Nation. I want us to begin by talking about um, what is expected today because we understand that the Finance and Planning Committee is about to start uh, the public hearings of uh, uh, the Finance Bill 2024. And uh, the Finance and Planning Committee Chair, Makuri Akimani, uh, spoke yesterday to Seth Olale and indicated that um, all voices will be heard, and they are also talking about the many submissions that have been received from Kenyans um, that uh, will uh, be heard. And we start there because, Fred, a lot of conversations have been going on. Uh, your side of the political divide, the Azimio coalition, has told members of parliament to reject the finance bill. But we know too well that in the end, there has to be a finance bill passing. So okay. when you say reject, what exactly <laughs> are the instructions? I thought what would be better is to pass amendments, yes. or to propose amendments. Sure, sure, sure. I agree, Sam. At the end of the day, there must be a finance bill. And I, I'm, I'm happy that um, uh, the Departmental Committee on uh, Finance and Economic Planning has. I think they are finishing their, the, the, the submissions for the uh, written memoranda is ending today, and then they'll be inviting the stakeholders for uh, consultation, mm -hmm. oral, oral, oral submissions. Mm -hmm. But some, we know that um, the public participation process is actually a key promise mm -hmm. in the Constitution. And, and, and we have seen the importance of conducting public participation. But even before we go there, what, what, what is the benefit of this public participation and what should it entail? Mm -hmm. It must, first of all, entail informing the public. Mm -hmm. It must also entail consulting with the public so that you get alternative decision. It must inform collaboration and it must empower the public so that you put the authority you of... Mean, you uh, mean alternative decision, alternative views? Al alternative views, right. alternative views. And also uh, uh, empowering you know, the, the public to give, uh, the, to put that decision-making authority in their hands. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at all these, it actually means that there is the benefit of conducting public participation, particularly on the Finance Bill 2024. Mm -hmm. It improves democracy and governance, a process of decision making, and it makes that process transparent and accountable. Mm -hmm. But let me take you back on the issue of Finance Bill 2024. I know you have gone through it and the public have gone through it, but there are certain key proposals that uh, have been uh, conspicuous and people have been talking about them. The issue of motor vehicle tax, for example, mm -hmm. that would require extensive, extensive public participation. Then the issue of expansion of the definition of what we call digital, digital monetization and uh, 
the digital marketplace. Those are issues that are going to affect <coughs> the public, mm -hmm. particularly when uh, the proposal is such that 20% of the income from such uh, uh, content will be, will be taxed, mm -hmm. you know, and also the, the motor vehicle. But I think if we go back to uh, the public participation that was carried or conducted on the current act, right. Finance Act 2023, mm -hmm. There's a survey that was done some by uh, a group of um, uh, civil society group called Tuaweza and the Center for Fiscal Affairs right. that actually showed some that majority of Kenyans, majority of Kenyans did not agree with some of the proposals in the Finance Act today. Mm, mm. Even though they submitted their view, they went through the public participation process where they were informed, there was collaboration, there was involvement, and then they were empowered. But at the tail end when the laws were being enacted, their decision did not see light of day. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so that, 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 that document is there. Then there is the issue of the fuel tax, the eight to 16%, if you remember, that majority of Kenyans, again, were not happy about. Then there was the issue of, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, housing levy, which was 3% and now 1.5%. Those are some of the issues in the Finance Act 2023 that majority of the people were not happy about and they submitted memoranda. They were invited for uh, consultation to give oral submissions. And nevertheless, <laughs> they still find their way mm. in the act. So in this current bill, Finance Bill 2024, I am sure that there also could be things that majority of Kenyans are not happy about, but because the chair finance um, uh, committee and uh, economic planning is saying that they will have to balance between raising revenue mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know, there's something else he says there. So I, 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 from where we sit as a Zimio, we feel that uh, if there are proposals that are punitive, to the majority, then those proposals should be relooked at. And we are hoping that even before the bill is rejected, then the views from the public, the views from the alternative, uh, I mean, from the, the other side of the politics, the Azimio, if they are incorporated and accommodated in a manner that is for the benefit of the majority, then there will be no need for rejecting the bill mm -hmm. because we shall have agreed as a people, we shall have balanced as a people, and we shall have seen that that is the is way that, that we can Is that a possibility in the current circumstance? It is not a possibility. <laughs> it's not a possibility, and that's why I say it. I gave you a reason, <laughs> a, a, a history of <laughs> going by the last finance. This is a possibility. So maybe what is likely to happen, some... As Institute of Public Finance, Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya, that is ISPAC, and then Deloitte, um, the audit firm. And as soon as they conclude this process, which, yes, starts today, but there are several, uh, a few days that uh, that will happen, the committee will be able to write its report and present it to the House. The committee may propose amendments based on the public hearings, but it's still the House that has the ultimate decision during the committee of the whole House stage when amendments will be proposed. Honorable Kagushia, help us understand that, yes, there has been a bit of response from Kenyans, a bit of it. And I also see it's on top of in Atlanta, Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia about the last mile connectivity mm -hmm. program. And uh, uh, that, that program is now back, and uh, I'm happy about that to report to Kenyans. Uh, and uh, it is good that uh, the members of public have now understood that whatever happens in government, mm -hmm has a way of impacting their day-to-day -day lives and also impacting what it is that they do uh, for, in, to, to generate their own income in the areas they work. Uh, and, and that is why, once again, we say the issue of involvement in politics and governance is, is not an option for anyone at whatever level. It is a must. And this is helping us as a country to raise the level of governance in this country. So I want to appreciate that uh, members of the public now are very keen mm -hmm. on different programs that are being rolled out by government. And, and that is why you see now we have uh, all these professional bodies that have come with, uh, with their input and they are proposing different mm -hmm. amendments or different uh, alternative views to the Committee of Finance. And uh, that will be happening today. And. Uh, the members of parliament have no option 
uh, they have no option now whatsoever rather than to other than to listen uh, to the views uh, that the members of the public are raising the professional bodies organized groups and even uh, random members of public who may have views the, the, the members of parliament must, must listen to this and of course again how do know, they listen to the random members of the public no they do because if you want to make a a memorandum to the finance committee you are free to do so in fact it is put in the newspaper for that any person anywhere can be able to do their own memorandum can be able to petition can be able to give their views at every uh, <coughs> level and this is usually put out there in the newspapers so that members can do it by the way uh, i'm finding a lot of that happening uh, i don't know th th whether this is always the case uh, but i'm finding quite a bit of petitions coming from the members of public on different aspects and on mm -hmm. different things. Mm -hmm. And that is why, if you remember, uh, the Speaker of the National Assembly has been very keen on the Public Petitions Committee, which at some point he, he felt was not uh, living up to or was not getting to the level that was expected. And so uh, <coughs> we, we, we are happy that uh, now this is happening. And of, co and of course, these views that mm. the members of public are giving as per the Article 10 of the Constitution of Kenya. And the committee must then go through those views and see how they are going to impact and how the members of public and how these professional bodies are, are, are indicating they are going to impact them. And if there are any things that uh, need to be adjusted, changed, removed, uh, raised, uh, then uh, the committee need to respond. Okay. And this time round, I can tell you, as members of parliament, we'll be very keen on what do the public say. Uh, and by the way, we also have our own views on different things. Mm -hmm. And how did the committee also react to those issues? Uh, so we'll be keen, and I want to assure the public, uh, there are quite a number of things that the public has raised that will be considered in this uh, particular finance bill. And so there should be no worry uh, that the parliament is not going to listen. I don't think I have had any member of parliament saying that uh, the finance bill will be passed in wholesale. Mm -hmm. I don't think that is the interest. The interest is to look at uh, an agreement. Where uh, do we put what? Like, like I have just had my brother Okango here raise two issues which are quite controversial, uh, controversial at the moment. Mm -hmm. We have the issue of uh, uh, the motor vehicle, motor vehicle tax. Uh, which he raises, and probably we would be sharing some uh, same views. But there's also the issue of the digital marketplace uh, taxation, which probably will differ, because he seems to have a problem with the 20% taxation for people who are deriving their earning from the digital marketplace. Uh, and and, and uh, I would wonder, the government is, is investing heavily in that field, is investing so heavily on... Uh, uh, fiber optic last my loss of connectivity in the country why would you earn from that uh, investment free of charge when another person who is earning less than you employed by government or by private companies is paying 30 percent of their tax you know if you you are charged 20 percent of your tax uh, why would it be a problem of your revenue you mean? Uh, yeah <laughs> why, why, why should it be a problem uh, when a person who is uh, at the same level as you is, is paying 30%. And some of the young Sorry, people... Sorry, I hope I'm not putting words in your mouth. You mean you charge 20%? You said 20% of your tax. What do you mean? No, 20% of the earnings. Okay. On from the, the, uh, from digital, the digital marketplace. marketplace. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, some of the people are misinformed that the government does not have any input in that area. Because what they say, I'm a content creator. I'm the one who created this content. <coughs> Where does the government come in? <laughs> but you know, for you to be able to circulate that content, uh, you, you, you need an infrastructure that has been but, but paid for. They might argue like that uh, they are paying for the service itself because when they get the internet services, they're paying the bundles for the bundles. Well, they are paying to the internet service providers. Uh, but then uh, even those internet service providers <coughs> have also benefited greatly from the undersea cables that the government Don't has they facilitated. pay for that? Yeah, well, they pay for that. But again, you as an individual, you're also <coughs> deriving an earning from that. I mean, there's nobody who doesn't pay for, out, uh, for inputs into their businesses. Mm -hmm. And uh, you pay inputs into whatever business, 
but whatever the earnings then that you, that you make from a business that has an infrastructure that is constructed by the government, you need to uh, also participate in building the economy. And I think this is where we were saying, mm -hmm. instead of continuing targeting the same, <coughs> same, same group of people all the times, raiding their pay slips, why don't you uh, increase or you expand the tax base and bring more so, people so on board? How would you propose to, there's something called tax administration, how would you propose to do that on people earning from those platforms? I mean, that is what the finance bill is proposing. And uh, it has given elaborate uh, you know, uh, proposals. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is what uh, I'm sure even the content creators themselves will be putting in. And you re remember last time there was quite an uproar and uh, that was, re uh, was lowered to 5%. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it seems like the government is not done with, with them yet. It has come back again to say, yes, we might have listened to you and we went to 5%, but uh, from an assessment uh, basis of what other people in, in, in different fields are, are getting, we still are convinced that you should be able to to, to that, that's what I'm asking, how do they pay? Because if you earn a salary like you do, yeah. you have a pay slip. Yeah. I, I mean, it's check of a yeah. system, yeah. so it's deducted at source. Yeah. So for the content creators, how do you do no, it? No, the good thing with the content creators is that most of their money that they earn are also taken through the uh, M-Pesa or they are taken through the accounts. Uh, it, it's really that you're going to earn from online and then you are paid cash. So your earnings w w will somehow go through the systems that are gained that are set by government for he helping you to collect money. So, but the M-Pesa is not set by government. I mean, uh, you don't know uh, Safaricom uh, is owned by government partially. It is not a government system. Yeah, it's not a government system. But what I'm saying is uh, the, the, the systems that exist that government has access to, some of them and quite a number of them are government infrastructure and others are also part of government investments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but all the same, it is not very difficult to access the earnings of people who are content creators. Just take a look at uh, musicians, for example, who have uh, uh, earnings from the Skiza tune and from such other loyalties that they get. Um, up to some extent, one would have thought, why would one pay anything from these earnings? Uh, and yet, the song belongs to them and all that. But now, uh, look at how they have been swindled in the past by some of these entities. And where do they run again to? They run to, to the same government and tell government, now we are being swindled. Help us to collect our earnings. Uh, government will tell them, okay, we, we will be able to help you in, in all this. But of course, now we also recognize that you also earn something. And so mm -hmm. you're going to be giving us much more, Kagusha, you, I'm sure you know that. Uh, and, and, and there's also another... From Music content is totally different from the content created by these other uh, on online creators. Yeah. So yeah. the tax administration might be slightly different. Yeah, there's also another uh, area uh, I know that the government may also be wanting to look at, the Airbnb. Yeah. There's something you're doing. Yeah. Um, you're moving away from my question. Mm. So we're going to take a short break. When you come back, we'll have uh, more conversation into this as well as what, what else I informed you about, that is the relations between the Kenya and the US, and also a bit of uh, local politics stated for that.